Max was a happy and healthy child, but his world was turned upside down when he suddenly and unexpectedly lost his eyesight. Unable to cope, his parents abandoned him. But years later, Max paid them a shocking visit. Max was born into an amazing family. It was the kind of family that any child would be lucky to be born into. His father, John, was a wealthy businessman and he owned a lot of stores in that area. He also owned several apartments around the city that he rented out. These businesses meant that he was bringing in a lot of money each month and he could afford to live in relative luxury with his wife, Max's mother, Susie. When Max was born, Susie fell into the role of being a stay-at-home mom perfectly. She had never had kids before, but she was a natural mother. While John was out busy making plenty of money, Susie would play with Max, teach him things, and help him grow and mature into a fine and adorable young boy. The two became very close, not just in a mother and son sense, but also in a best friends kind of way. They formed a strong bond and became inseparable. It truly was a beautiful thing to see. John wanted the very best for his son and paid for him to go to all the fanciest schools, dress in the very best and most fashionable of clothes, and socialize with kids that were equally rich and well off. Suffice it to say, Max certainly had a special and privileged upbringing, one that any parent would want for their child if they could afford it. Life was amazing for Max and everything was going perfectly, until it wasn't because something was about to happen that would change the course of the poor boy's future forever. Keep watching to find out more. Arriving back home from school one day, Max threw down his bag and went to his mother to ask if he could go and play outside. It was a lovely day, so he might as well go and get some fresh air and enjoy the sunshine. He was now eight, and Susie trusted Max to be safe and sensible, so she agreed, telling him to be back in an hour for dinner. The family always used to sit down together at the table and eat. It was one of the rare opportunities the three family members could spend some quality time together. Max promised he would be and ran off outside to meet his friends. Susie started preparing dinner. Some nice sirloin steaks with a salad and potatoes. Delicious. She then prepared the table for dinner and poured herself a glass of wine. Looking up at the clock, she was surprised to see that it had already been an hour since Max went out to play. Time certainly flies when you're keeping yourself busy. But it wasn't like Max to be late. Where could he be? Peering out of the window, she could neither hear nor see her son or any of his friends. Susie was starting to feel a little bit anxious. John told her to calm down and that boys would be boys. But at that moment, the phone rang, making her jump out of her skin. Walking over to the phone, she picked it up and answered it. It was the hospital. Max had just been brought in by an ambulance and he had suffered some kind of accident. Susie and John understandably freaked out. They weren't sure what had happened to their son, but all they knew was that they had to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Arriving at the medical center only 10 minutes later, it became clear that the situation was serious. Doctors were asking for Susie and John's approval to do surgery and told them that they would need to make a decision quickly if they wanted the best results. Confused and scared, the parents agreed. It turned out that Max had gotten into an accident and banged his head very hard. He had a big wound that could easily be fixed, however there was some brain damage, resulting in the boy going blind. He would never see again. John and Susie were devastated. Luckily, they were referred to a man named Alex. He had been through something similar and had lived blind since he was 10 years old, only a few years older than Max. Alex explained that blindness didn't have to be a death sentence. It was rather something that just had to be adapted to. Now, some describe being blind as seeing complete darkness, as if they were blindfolded in an already pitch black room, while others said that they saw sparks and random flashes of light. Some even described how they had vivid hallucinations and saw strange and even disturbing images. What was clear that no two blind people experienced the same thing when it came to what they did and didn't see. Still, once he was out of the hospital, Max found it hard. He struggled to cope with this new dark life. He would pay visits to Alex every few days, but still Max spiraled. He eventually started to skip meals, not eating out of depression. John and Susie were at the end of their tether 
and didn't know what to do next. And that's when Alex suggested letting Max come to live with him for a month or two. He would try to train the boy to cope with his blindness. So the parents agreed. The couple of months passed and Max made great progress thanks to Alex. At the end of their time together, Alex called John to ask him to come and pick Max up. But John's reply was shocking. And it left Alex absolutely shocked as well. John said that he and Susie had a long talk and they had decided that they would abandon Max and let him stay with Alex. Before Alex could even reply, John had hung up. Alex didn't know whether to feel sad for poor Max that his parents had so cruelly abandoned him just because he was blind or happy that he would get to take care of this obviously lovely boy. Still, that didn't make breaking the news to Max any less difficult. In order to put off the inevitable, Alex decided to tell Max that his parents said that he could stay there for another month. Luckily, Alex and Max had a great bond, almost as if they were a father and son. But eventually, the truth had to come out. Alex told Max about his parents not wanting him anymore, and Max was understandably devastated. Still, thanks to the amazing bond that he had with Alex, he dealt with the situation quite well. Of course, Max missed his parents, but if they couldn't cope with the fact that now he was blind, then there was no way Max could change their mind. At least, Alex understood him and understood what he was going through. Many years passed and Max overcame his blindness, learning to live with it. He even went on to do amazingly at school and then college and eventually training to become a lawyer. Max was actually a fantastic lawyer and though he was blind, he was still sharp as a tack and never missed any evidence or loophole to help his clients out. He specialized in helping out people who couldn't afford a lawyer and spent most of his time fighting for the little man or the underdog. And all the while, Alex supported him. Now more of a parent to Max than John or Susie ever were. One day, an elderly woman walked into Max's law office. She was living in a rented apartment and the owner wanted to kick her out with very little warning. This was clearly an illegal thing to do, as tenants require several months of notice before having to vacate an apartment. So Max agreed to represent the woman. But there is one shocking twist left to this tale. One that some of you might have guessed. Keep watching to find out whether you're right or not. It turned out that the old woman's apartment was owned by none other than John, Max's real father. Max couldn't believe the news when he discovered it. So many years had passed that he thought maybe his parents had died, or at least moved away. But no, they were still alive and trying to force this poor old woman out onto the streets. So Max and the lady decided to pay them a visit in hopes of striking some kind of deal. Knocking on the door, Max would have been lying if he had said if he wasn't a little nervous. John and Susie opened the door. It was clear that they had recognized the woman, but not the man. Max introduced himself as her lawyer, but didn't mention his name. He told John and Susie to leave the old woman alone and leave her in peace, just as they left their son. It was at that point that the penny dropped with them, and both John and Susie understood who was standing before them. Susie cried and told him that it was all John's idea, though Max didn't believe them. But Max had an ace up his sleeve. He told his parents that he had found evidence that they were avoiding tax and embezzling money, and that the police had been informed. He just wanted to be the one to tell them that their game was up. Max and the old lady turned and walked away as police cars pulled up outside the house. It was at that point that John and Susie realized how powerful, special, and important that Max was. Max might not have been able to see, but they were the ones that were blind to just how special he was. So now it's over to you. What did you think of this incredible story? How would you have reacted if your parents turned their backs on you? As always, we love to hear from you, so be sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below.